Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Robert James Fischer and Boris Vasiljevic Spassky. It's game 20 uh, and if you've been with us so far you know that the previous six games have been drawn and Fischer is still three points in the lead. Uh, Spassky now has the black pieces and it seems that uh, pretty much everyone knows that it will. it is highly unlikely that Spassky will come back uh, <laughs> Uh, to equalize in this match and even win this match. Uh, Dr. Max Uwe, FIDE president, uh, already arrived in Reykjavik, uh, getting ready for the final ceremony and everything. Uh, and uh, a lot of players, uh, for example, Livone from Spassky's camp, decided to leave for uh, for Moscow. Uh, and um, uh, most, of the, most of the things uh, off the board now is no longer about the cameras, about anything, but it's actually about the prize money. Uh, now, uh, it, it seems that the prize fund is, will be subject uh, to taxes, uh, but uh, the, um, uh, f the Federation of Reykjavik uh, decided that uh, they will not submit this prize one, uh, fund to the taxes. They decided to make uh, an exception this time, uh, well, uh, thinking that in good faith uh, uh, Spassky will not have to pay taxes for his winnings uh, when he gets back home uh, to the Soviet Union and that Fischer will not have to pay um, taxes for his winnings when he returns home to the United States, uh, if he does. Uh, and it seems like uh, that uh, will be going well, but we're going to discuss that a bit more. And uh, Fisher's uh, legal representative, Mr. Paul Marshall, uh, said that uh, he found Fisher some nice work when he gets back home into the United States. Um, all of the jobs that he found for him uh, were some uh, six figures uh, big, uh, and they were mostly... Uh, about uh, signing autographs and uh, playing a few simultaneous exhibitions. Uh, but, you know, uh, even if uh, he doesn't get the money and uh, his accounts uh, get frozen, he will still be able to at least uh, get something somehow. Uh, but, uh, you know, he still has to win this match, even though he's uh, three points in the lead. So, uh, Fischer has the white pieces, uh, and in this game, he opens with e4. Later, after the match, uh, both of the players said that their favorite move uh, for this match was uh, <laughs> when they played white e4. Uh, but, okay, c5. Spassky is again interested in a fight with knight to f3, knight to c6, and d4. Uh, c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, d6, and Fischer does not go for his favorite Sozin, but rather, uh, again, he repeats uh, the richter Raza variation from the 18th game. Uh, and okay, e6, Spassky doesn't mind playing the exact same variation, we have queen to d2, uh, a6, we have a queenside castle, bishop to d7, and now f4. Bishop to e7, this is the exact same game the two of them played in the 18th game, and here uh, Fischer, if you remember, continued with knight to f3, he prepared e5, but for this game he prepared bishop to e2. Uh, it's a very rare move that was, uh, to this game, played only three times before, uh, and it comes... Uh, with the idea of simply developing a piece and preparing to bring this bishop over to f3 uh, to hinder black's, black's development of the queen side with b5. Uh, so, okay, we have castles by Spassky. Uh, playing something like h6 doesn't really work here with the idea of uh, bishop to h4 and now capturing an e4 uh, because knight can simply capture an e4. And after bishop captures an h4, you have this knight captures on d6 check. That's the problem. King to f8, and of course, uh, white white is much better here. You can simply attack the bishop, uh, and now the threat is uh, either capturing here and then capturing on f7 with a double attack being created against the bishop on d7, and whatever black plays, let's say bishop to e7, you will still capture on f7. King captures, and now queen can capture here, captures, captures, and it will be a much better position for white. Uh, so, after this uh, Fischer's bishop to e2, uh, we have castles by Spassky, and now comes a bishop to f3. And now, of course, b5 would be uh, a bit too early, as e5 now will win you the game. There's a, an attack against your knight on f6, and also this comes with a double attack uh, against the knight on c6. If you capture, of course, you will lose the rook on a8. Uh, so, here h6 is played, uh, and here Fischer goes uh, bishop to h4. Also, a possibility here, and a very interesting one, is definitely h4, something well, you would play in a blitz game, uh, but here it's not so clear. Uh, Black can simply ignore you and continue playing this game, either by starting to develop on the queen side, he can capture on d4, and then you always have to figure out what will you do here. Uh, I mean, you can always, of course, capture on f6, but if it doesn't work, uh, better not play it. So Fischer simply allows the following simplification, as he's three points in the lead in this match, and he of, he really doesn't mind any simplifications. Uh, bishop to h4 is played, and now Spassky does go for knight captures on e4. Uh, bishop captures on e7 by Fischer. If you play knight captures on e4 first, uh, and allow bishop captures on h4, 
Uh, then knight captures on d6 comes, but uh, practice showed that black will be better after queen to c7. Attacking the knight on d6, uh, and after knight captures, bishop captures, uh, bishop captures on c6, queen captures on c6. Um, the material on the board is equal, but black has a bishop against the knight, and this dark square bishop, when it comes back to f6, will be extremely powerful. Uh, the rooks can come uh, easily to the open files, and uh, black can just start pushing his pawns on the queen side. Uh, all in all, black would be better here. So instead, uh, bishop captures on e7, and now comes knight captures on d2. Uh, not knight captures on e7. Uh, because now you have this knight captures on c6 with the threat of first capturing on e7 with check. So now if you knight captures on d2, knight captures on e7 comes with check. King has to move and only now will you recapture. Uh, and here, of course, you would be up a piece uh, as white and there's really nothing you can do. Even if you trap this knight, that wouldn't really help you. Rook captures here. Uh, rook captures and now bishop captures on d7. Still, you would be uh, up, up a whole knight with a better position. Uh, completely winning for white, so after bishop captures on e7, knight captures on d2, this are, these are all very known simplifications. Uh, bishop captures on d8, knight captures on f3, knight captures on f3, rook f captures on d8, and now rook captures on d6. Uh, and king to f8, uh, preparing to bring the king over to e7. Uh, we have rook h to d1, doubling up uh, on the d file, and now king to e7, defending the bishop on d7 that was attacked twice. Uh, knight to a4, preparing to uh, play knight to b6, or even knight to c5, but it would be uh, a very problematic uh, for black. So, bishop to e8 first, Spassky uh, uh, forces a trade of rooks, we have rook captures, rook captures, and now knight to c5. Uh, if Fisher immediately exchanges the other pair of rooks as well with uh, rook captures and king captures, uh, the king will be much closer to defend the king side pawns. So Fisher go decides against this. Uh, we have knight to c5, attacking the pawn on b7. Uh, rook to b8, defending it. If rook captures on d1 with check, then king captures and the knight to d8. Uh, okay, this uh, defends the queen side, but it's very unlikely that you would be able to push for anything here with the black pieces. It, it's hard as it is, but Spassky has to, has to create chances. Uh, we have rook to b8, and now comes rook to d3. Uh, as Spassky decided to go... Uh, play this game and did not uh, go into this drawish line. Fisher now wants to play rook to b3 and question uh, Spassky's position here on the queen side. Uh, we have a5 here. As the b7 pawn can't really be moved, as knight captures on a6 would be played, first a5 and now preparing b5. Uh, Fisher first plays rook to b3. He forces Spassky to push his b pawn. Uh, we have b5 and now comes a3. Uh, we have a4 attacking uh, Fisher's rook and now rook back to c3. And now uh, Spassky's two pawns on the queen side are controlling Fisher's three pawns on the queen side very nicely, but uh, there are some uh, dark square weaknesses on the queen side. Uh, rook to d8, now the rook is no longer useful here, you can simply shift it to control the d-file, and now knight to d3. Uh, closing the d-file and uh, perhaps planning knight to e5. So uh, Spassky prevents it, we have f6. Uh, rook to c5, attacking the b5 pawn, and now rook comes back to b8 to guard the pawn. Uh, rook to c3, and now comes g5. Uh, we have g3 by Fisher, not allowing Spassky to mobilize his uh, huge pawn mass on the king side, uh, and king to d6. Spassky will now try to uh, increase the activity of his king. Uh, knight to c5, and now comes g4. Uh, Spassky doesn't mind uh, uh, this static position that will be created on the king side. Uh, but uh, as it does give him some more activity, he will have now more dark square weaknesses on the king side as well. Uh, knight to e4, this comes with check, king has to protect the f6 pawn, so king to e7, and now comes knight to e1. Uh, rook to d8, and now comes knight to d3. Uh, we have rook to d4, and now knight back to f2, attacking the g4 pawn, so h5 simply defending the pawn. Uh, rook to c5, and now Spassky has to deal with Fisher's very strong rook on c5, so he offers the exchange, rook to d5, and here if, if Fisher would accept this, uh, rook captures, pawn captures, then uh, Spassky's king is a, a bit more active and his pieces are more active, the bishop would be very strong here, uh, and Spassky's pawns are now controlling a, a lot more space, so it would have been a, a better minor piece endgame for Spassky. So Fisher of course declines this, he goes rook to c3, and now comes knight back to d4. Uh, rook to c7 with check, as here uh, 
Spassky was threatening knight to e2 with, with check to pick up the rook. So first rook to c7 check. Uh, rook to d7, Spassky offers a trade, and here Fisher accepts it. Rook captures, bishop captures, and here comes knight to e1. Not allowing Spassky to, to create an outpost for his knight on f3. Uh, we have e5 by Spassky, f captures, f captures, and king to d2. Uh, we have bishop to f5 now gaining control uh, of the e4 square not allowing this knight to get activated with knight to e4 and also the knight and bishop uh, are pressuring the c2 pawn uh, the king has to keep an eye on it or or he will have to push it to c3 uh, but that will further create weaknesses uh, on the queen side uh, so knight to d1 uh, preparing uh, move knight to e3 to activate the knight this way uh, and here we have king to d6. This is the move Spassky played and this is the move that was sealed. So the game was adjourned here and it will be continued tomorrow. And uh, as Gligorich mentions in his book, it does make sense to simply uh, improve the position of the king, not make any rash moves with the pawns or with the pieces, and then analyze the position over the entire night and decide what, what is best here. Uh, so when the game was continued, uh, unfortunately, uh, this is one of the few games where Gligorich does not mention <laughs> if Fischer came on time, but... Uh, uh, as uh, the one time that Fisher did uh, come on time, he mentioned it, so I will assume that uh, Fisher was again late for, <laughs> for the continuation of the game. Uh, but okay, knight to e3, attacking the bishop on f5, this is Fisher's continued move, and now bishop to e6. Uh, we have king to d3, and now bishop to f7. Uh, uh, trying to meet Fisher's advance of the king, king e4 with this bishop to g6 check. Uh, this would of course win the game for Spassky, as the king has nowhere to go. Uh, you would have to block with the knight, and then bishop capture simply wins you a piece, and of course the game. Uh, so after bishop to f7, Fisher simply moves the king, king to c3, uh, and now we have king to c6. Uh, king back to d3 by Fisher, uh, king to c5, and now king to e4. Spassky allows Fisher's king to enter uh, here to attack the pawn, as um, uh, if, if, if Spassky wants to create chances for him to win the game, he also has to allow Fisher some chances, uh, otherwise there's really nothing to do here. Uh, and king to d6, simply moving the king back, uh, defending the pawn. As bishop to g6 isn't all that impressive now, uh, as the e5 pawn is unguarded, Fisher can simply capture it, and there's, there are no threats against the c2 pawn, as both of Fisher's knights are defending it. Uh, so, after king to e4, we have king to d6 defending the pawn, and now Fisher simply moves back, king to d3. He's more than satisfied with a draw, it's already game 20, he has three points in the lead in the match. Uh, if Spassky wants to create something, he will have to push uh, harder than this. Uh, bishop to g6 check, and now goes king back to c3. King to c5, and now comes knight to d3. Uh, attacking the e5 pawn, and here king back to d6 defending. Uh, knight to e1. Uh, again, uh, not allowing this knight to come to f3, and here king to c6 was played. Uh, it's interesting, but knight to f3 is not enough for black, because here if knight captures on f3, pawn captures and king to d2, uh, black will uh, try something. Uh, the king can even come very close uh, into the position, but after king e1, king d4, and king to f2, uh, there's not all that much black can do here. For example, if e4, then comes h4, and this formation of g3 and h4, these two pawns are on dark squares, so Spassky's uh, light square bishop will be of very little use here. Uh, these two pawns are creating a wall against Spassky's king, so he can never approach the position. You can't really do anything with pushing of the pawns. Uh, all the important pawns on the queen side are on dark squares as well, and uh, Spassky can just move the king here or dance around with his bishop. Fisher will simply re repeat moves in 91, 93, 91, 93, and there's really nothing to do here. So unfortunately, this does not work knight to f3. So Spassky tried king to c6, uh, but now comes king d2. Fisher is, again, satisfied with a draw, not trying anything. Uh, king c5, knight to d3 with check. King moves knight to e1, knight to e6 by Spassky, king to c3. Uh, and here Spassky played knight to d4 and uh, Fischer uh, called the, the chief arbiter Lothar Schmidt and he said uh, he wanted to, uh, uh, well, uh, he said that it's a draw by threefold repetition and Spassky didn't even wait for Lothar Schmidt to check, he just signed uh, Fischer's uh, <laughs> claim for a draw and the game was drawn here. But in fact it was not a threefold repetition, it was, it was only a, a twofold repetition. Uh, but uh, I, I mean there's really no way for Spassky to push for anything here. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he could have waited, uh, but uh, obviously he was satisfied with a draw, so even uh, with twofold repetition, he, uh, you know, he acknowledged Fisher's claim for a draw. 
So yeah, uh, that's game 20. I do hope you enjoyed it. The result is now 11 and a half to 18 and a half uh, in Fisher's favor. So still three points in the lead. Uh, that we are getting very close to the end of this uh, spectacular match, so you know definitely stay tuned. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Michael Hildebrand, uh, Michael Cabral, uh, Patrick uh, McKibbins, uh, Nancy Trotman, uh, and Mark Lefebvre for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. Definitely, I will finish this series before the start of the Carlson Caruana match in November. And also, I would like to wish a happy birthday to Mateusz Polkowski from Poland. Uh, it's a, a couple of days late, but I hope you had a very nice celebration. So, thank you all, and I will see you soon.